be a class act, be a good sport, be a winner in the game of sportsmanship. We welcome tonight's game official, Mike Amundsen, Michael Anderson, Zachary Clark, and Ed Madlock. Now for the starting lineup, the Parker, Bert Abbott, and Parker, Bert Falcon. A sophomore, number three, Quinlan Schultz. A senior, number 12, Alan Waller. A senior, number 20, Anderson Williamson. A junior, number 22, Kendall Ryder. And a senior, number 50, Kennedy Lynn. And now,
everybody. Welcome to the Jayhawk Sports Network from Arlington Technology. You're watching along on video. Nate Kleber joining in now. Luke Baldwin uh, not on the upper patio tonight uh, as he is uh, gone, predisposed, or something like that. Anyway, uh, fresh coming off a of boys' uh, freshman sophomore game is where I'm at as uh, I pulled the, the parent hat out. So we are 6.06 to go uh, left in this first half. And uh, Jessup right now with that one-point advantage. And uh, you look at scoring as I'm playing a little catch-up here as well. Laney Pilcher, who's been the leading scorer on this team uh, into the season. Again, Jessup coming in with a record of 1-2 so far on the year. Uh, a loss to Wakanda opened up on the 22nd of, of November. Uh, beating Denver 63-60 last week up at their place. And a loss, a uh, tough loss up at Summer Fredericksburg here this week, 55 to 47. So Laney Pilcher with six points. You got a couple points also for Peyton Bowes as well as for uh, Nesbitt. Laney Pilcher did have 30 points the other night up at Sumner Fredericksburg. Nesbitt left side of the lane, unable to find an outlet before that shot clock buzzes and turn that back over to Applington Parkersburg. AP coming in this undefeated on the on the season overall and also in the conference end of things, getting a win over Hampton Dumont 54 to 30 back on November the 21st in their opener, pounding O line 60 25. Then a couple road wins. Uh, they're on a five game road stretch here before the Christmas break. Rundy Center beat them on the road 78 41. 57-37 victory over Columbus. Uh, Jessup tonight, next week Union and Hudson before they will close out that week before Christmas at home with South Harden. But wow, five road games uh, for Jessup. But this is the first time I've gotten a chance to see the Jayhawks as they maintain again that lead 18 to 17. Yeah, they've had quite the road stretch as well. Had to Gladbrook Ryan back next week. And then have Union next Friday as they close out their schedule before break. There will be nothing, looks like no grains at all before holiday break for the Jessup uh, girls squad. 18-17 again our score. Five points for Pilcher, two points for Bose. Actually three points for Bose as she did get that free throw in there. Pilchard inbound. Jayhawks pushing towards that south basket here in the Jessup South Gym tonight. AP faithful have come out. They've made that hour drive over to Jessup. Stands underneath our patio or full with red. Four fifty-five to go, first half. Pilcher looking to break it in. Cohagen in the middle. Going to choose to go to Adriana Bolden. Pilcher and I is a corner three. Back of the rim, no good. And trying to fight for is Youngblood. Peyton Youngblood in the game now for Jessup. This score is maintained for a while. Coach Jordan Conrad down below. Guiding where he wants to see these girls on defense. Go ahead and pull down that board. Okay. Scout Cohagen pull down the board, but Jessup takes it to the other end, and they're able to see Pilcher convert on that rebound and take her to eight points. AP tries a big three. Count that in for Lexi Oswagen. And that'll be Oswagen's first basket, I believe. As Dirk Dahl subbing in for Ardell Oshner, who uh, is laid up with uh, an apparent uh, adult wreck injury, apparently. So Dirk on the sideboards down below, trying to keep things updated and uh, where they need to be. He might just get that job full time. 
Ardell says if he's lucky. Tied up at 20. Shot goes up, no good. Rebound in Schultz's hands for AP. Pulls back behind that arch. Ball comes out of bounds. It'll be Falcon ball. Almost gets loose. Arms up, defensive coverage. Pilcher on the move quickly. She'll get that steal, gets across mid-court. He's an opening with uh, Sailor Youngblood. Actually with Bolden. Saw the ponytail. Adriana Bolden. That'll be her first basket of the day. But as I say that, I see Sailor over there with uh, pigtails, not the ponytail she usually has, which I would prefer because you can see the jersey number better. Yeah, it's hard to see that number one or a single digit when you get the ponytail. I have to submit that to the girls' union. Three minutes to go, first half. Scoring right now, get eight points for Laney Pilcher. Again, she had 30 the other night, getting Sumner Fred. Pilcher leading scorer on this team, 27 points per game on average, shooting 47.5%, pushing 56% from beyond the arch, and a 77% free throw shooter. Elizabeth Nedbit, Liz, Olivia Nesbitt next on that line, the sophomore, almost 11 points per game. Peyton Bowes averaging six. Laney Pilcher also the leading rebounder, 10.7, as well as uh, rebounds. Elizabeth Nedbitt also in there about seven. And Aaron Bolden leads this team with an average of uh, 2.7 assists. Head coach Jordan Conrad, Erica Bass is the assistant coach along with Roger Oberhauer, Jason Pilcher, Taylor Sickles, and Bruce Wall. Three minutes to go. Full pressure from the Falcons. Adriana caught up midcourt. Peyton Bowes eventually with her hands on it. Laney calls for it. Looked like it was going to go Adriana, but went to Nesbitt, who puts it up there. Peyton will knock that out out of the hands of Waller. is going to slow that down. Trailing by two. 37 to go first half. Jessup and Applington Parkersburg tonight on the Jayhawks Sports Network. Marlin Technology. Nate Claybrook falling solo in a girls game. Jason Pilcher coming up for the boys game. As Luke Baldwin is uh, getting ready to sun himself in some sort of uh, southern territory next week. Youngblood, Cohagen, Nesbitt, Pilcher, Bowes all in. Lob it into Nesbitt. Slight height advantage inside. Bowes tries to come left side. Can't make that work. Out of bounds. Peyton Bowes on the inbound. Pilcher finds Bose, two minutes to go. She'll snake around Williamson. On that dribble, finds Youngblood. Laney moves over, push in. Cohagen up. She's going to draw that foul. Scout Cohagen, six foot center. She's a junior. New to Jessup. Superintendent's kid. It's that free throw in. (laughs) 
Pushing 90 seconds. AP with Waller. Take it inside now to Rickard. Or Ryher. Hey, young boy catches that one just in time. Split second earlier, she would have missed it. Saw where she needed it. 26-20. Jessup will get that ball. Substitutions coming in. Bolden along with Youngblood. Peyton Bowes will have a seat along with uh, Cohagen. Bolden, on a double team, Pilcher. She'll keep mo momentum going as she gives it to Bowes, tries to hit a three, rebound to Nesbitt, she follows through. Give her to four points, under a minute to play first half. Right side up, bring that in. Count that bucket in. Tighten things up, 11 points now for Waller on a 28-20 score right now in the first half. AP Falcons and Jessup Jayhawks tonight. Boosman in. For AP. Oh, Youngblood finds an opening high up on that board. Nonetheless, it goes through. And Sailor Youngblood, first basket of the night, 18 seconds. Zone pressure from Jessup. Little opening in the paint. Nesbitt high up to try and block that. She tries to pull that board. Clock will stop about 10 seconds to go. Jump possession will be towards AP. Inbound Boosman. Try to make some movement with Waller. Not going to be able to get another shot off. Pilcher's racing the clock. She might be able to do it. Backboard no good, and that will be it. At halftime, Jessup with a 30 to 23 advantage right now on, on the AP Falcons. We've got some unofficial scoring right now. Again, I jumped in here after the first quarter. Laney Pilcher right now sitting with eight points. Uh, two points for Bose, four for Nesbitt, two for Sailor. Adriana Bolden has uh, two as well. Hoping to get a hold of uh, Joe Smines and try and preview the boys' game coming up here following this one. If we can get his attention down on the floor, but uh, Jayhawk boys coming in tonight, uh, they've got a record on the season of 3-0, and got a victory the other night at Sumner Fred, win at Denver, beat Columbus on this floor not too long ago.
right, I think we've got some communication figured out that uh, Joe, Sp Joe Smythe is going to join us here up on headset, kind of preview the game here, get uh, a few minutes to talk to him. And as the winter season has started, too, for wrestling and girls basketball, I close out uh, as we get into, uh, into tonight. We'll hand the headset over to Joe. I'm going to guess you don't carry your phone. I don't have it with me right now. <laughs> today, today has been just cr wild. I don't. It's like we haven't had a home game this year. Well, I, I guess not for girls, technically. No, it's everybody in. You know, everybody how, go, how it goes. So, anyway, bringing up uh, Joe Smines, uh, athletic director and boys basketball coach here at Jessup. But, uh, Joe, uh, already 3 0 in the season, just looking at the boys' end of things. Uh, you know, you've got a, a different team they had last year. Yep. Different style, different weapons. Yeah, it's, you know, we, two years ago we made the decision we were going to play a little bit faster, more so on defense. We've always wanted to play fast on offense. And last year's group was kind of in between yet a little bit. You know, we had Carson who could play in the half court and was a post player. We knew going into this year we had to play a little bit different, and uh, this group's done a great job of it. Started last year with them, basically, with the JV team winning 13 in a row to end the season. And um, now you had Brevin and Jack in that mix, and they've really well, gelled well together so far. Yeah, it's a fun group. They practice hard. They play hard. Um, tonight will be our first really, really real challenge, and we're excited to play them. Yeah, let's talk back to Summer Fredericksburg on Tuesday night, and uh, I was up for that game, and they they were on Jack. It was like yep. the defense against Jack is get Jack some fouls. Yep. Yeah, you know, and Jack's going to see a lot of traffic. I mean, anybody that scouts us knows that he's our number one option, and uh, Sumner tried to be physical with him, tried to body him. He got a little bit of foul trouble. With the Jacks credit in the second half, he was uh, really, really good. I think he had maybe 16 or 18 in the second half. Took care of the ball, didn't foul anybody. So uh, he's really good at adjusting to how teams guard him. He'll, he may see some boxing one. He may get double teamed. But uh, as we get going through the year here, we'll, we'll adjust, and he'll get better at those things. And uh, the great thing is we have other people score for us. Ryan Durham hit some big right. shots for us in the first half. Um, Kale Shizzle shot the ball well. And then Treptow has been really, really good on both ends of the floor. So we feel like we got seven guys that can score for us. If Jack has a little trouble or, you know, is not shooting as well. So that's a good thing about this team. Well, it was like the night we watched Columbus. Uh, you know, Jack went off for a bunch of points, yeah. but so did the other guys. Yeah, we had four guys in double figures, I think, every game so far this year, uh, which is great. You know, that's, that's, how you, that's how you play successful basketball. Same as last year, we had, you know, four or five guys every night. It seemed like somebody different every night. For us to be successful, Jack's got to score, obviously, but we got to have other guys that step up for us. And uh, we've seen that so far, and we'll need that again tonight. Well, let's talk through, uh, I guess, just uh, how things have gone as now you're kind of on the regular schedule, a couple yep. games a week and, yep. and uh, practices getting a, probably a little more intense and you're probably getting uh, some some injuries, some strains yep. and things like that. Uh, just talk through that. Well, you know, early in the year, it's, you know, you, you're kind of guessing going into games a little bit with uh, who you're playing scouting report wise. Now you're three, four, five games into a season. You, the team's starting to take, take shape as we are. So... You know, there's constant adjustments being made, uh, you know, changing cracks a little bit to maybe fit what fits us as a whole program and also to get our varsity ready to play on, on game night. So, you know, it's ever changing. As you get further into it, teams scout a little harder, realize what's going on. So you got to start adjusting and start, you know, and that's why all the preseason stuff and auto season stuff is important for a coaching staff to, to be prepared uh, for anything that may eventually happen with the group. So, and we do have a few injuries, a few illnesses going around. So, that plays into it, but uh, we should be a full complement tonight, and uh, we'll see if they can make it through. We'll talk AP here in just a sec, but let's. You, you talked about that three or four games in. Yep. What teams are you looking down the line? You're like, okay, they're different than I thought they would be. Oh, or maybe it's the yep. the, the the going high or going low. I guess. Yeah, it's a great thing with having huddle, and you can or YouTube. You can watch about any game you want. So, I try not to get too far down the road. I try to do a lot of that preliminary work before the year starts. Um, but obviously, I've watched some teams. We're going to play. But there's scores you see come yeah. up, or point totals, yeah. or whatever. You know, well, like, what's going on? Uh, there? The first thing that popped up to me was Union. Uh, Union lost a lot of seniors, and they had a kid come up and score 25 for them. And I didn't recognize the name. Always a transfer from uh, Linmar. So okay. uh, same with AP tonight. They got two kids in their lineup that are, are new this year to Abington Parkersburg. So you know, kids you don't you don't know about. You're learning on the fly a little bit. And then there's all, also the other teams that are haven't changed at all. Uh, they do the same things. We, we play GR here Tuesday night. I could turn the tape on. It's the same team that that coach has had for 20 years. They're on the same exact stuff. So um, it, it always catch you a little by surprise a little bit. Now you shouldn't be caught by surprise. So 
everything's out there. Now you got to keep getting better and adding stuff to your uh, offense and defense. Well, you can ask, you can answer this from your AD standpoint or coach standpoint. The whole change with open enrollment now and things yeah. like that. Just the impact that you're seeing that uh, now and in the future of yeah. what that could mean. I've heard three things already this week about either schools allowing someone to, to transfer without having to sit out if both schools agree upon it. I've also heard a school denying it. I've also heard, you know, I saw a, a, today a girl and girls wrestling transferred from Underwood to uh, another school. So, you know, as you see it at the college level, uh, it's starting to trickle down a little bit into the high school level. And and the thing that's frustrating is that, you know, you get into this business or into the education world to teach kids uh, a lot of things, and that's not what this should right. be about. Right. And um, that's why I told our guys today, you know, our, our basketball team today is our seven varsity guys are kids that have all been here for a long, long time. And we take great pride in that. We want our kids to be successful and be here. And we're going we're gonna to play with kids we got, and we're going to compete our best. So. Well, tonight, you look at the stat sheet, it matches up pretty even. Talk about what you what you anticipate seeing and uh, you know how they think they're going to play you. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a typical AP team. They want to get up and down the floor. They're pretty deep. They're going to they're gonna pressure you, uh, just like we're going to. Uh, they added that the kid from East High, who's a, who's a post player, but he plays a little more on the wing. They really don't maybe necessarily have that 6'8 guy in the middle that they're going to run stuff for like they had the kid of Hawkstead last year. So in that way, they're a little bit different. But uh, it's a typical AP team. They shoot the ball well, mixed defenses, uh, good players. Um, Matchup-wise, I feel like we got good matchups. You know, we're not we're not undersized a ton in, in, against this team like we have been. Maybe against Denver and uh, Columbus where we were a little undersized. Uh, not as much tonight, and it uh, should be a really up-and-down game. Great crowd against two really good basketball teams. Well, Joe, thanks for uh – Eventually figuring out how to get up here. So <laughs> I'd, uh, Sorry about that. I only had to make a couple of calls yep. and that figured out. But, Joe, good luck tonight. Thanks, guys. Head coach Joe Smines, as uh, we are in the pregame, or uh, halftime, I guess, of uh, the girls' game, 32-23. We'll jump back on the headset here in about 30 seconds. This is the Jayhawk Sports Network. Right into the second half as uh, Jayhawks again with the advantage, 30-23 right now, going towards that north basket here in the south gym. Jayhawks have Adriana Bolden. She's got that ball as we are underway again. No score as we are just 20 seconds into this one. Pilcher looking to come that left side. Ball gets a little loose as they rush it. It's going to see Adriana Bolden try and chase down a Falcon who takes it to the other end and will get that score. Bolden sets up for three, going to miss that net. Does come out of bounds, and uh, Pilcher tried to save that. But on the line, Falcons will have it. Didn't score for AP, 11 points is Waller. She is their leading scorer on the season with 18 point average, 40 point or 40% field goal shooter. 38 and a half from the threes. Kendall Weihard, 14 and a half points per game. 43% uh, field goal shooter. Weihard also leads in rebounds. It's a little over seven per game. On the assist end of things, Quinlan Schultz, four and a half assists through four games so far for the Falcons. They got that one victory in the conference. I think that matches up against uh, 
Union. I think he's on that conference side of things. Bolden on her own, takes a dribble, comes left side, going to get that thing knocked away. Lynn had her hand on that for AP. AP has slowed down this offense. Look inbound, Quinlan Schultz has a sophomore. Guard launches it way up high. Finds Addison, Addison Williamson. Work around that arch. Bo Bowes had a hand on it, knocked it down a little bit. Good defensive coverage from Pilcher underneath as Kennedy Lynn tried to take the shot. Ball come out of bounds, Jessup will inbound. Bolden takes a couple jumps, but uh, Bolden takes that shot straight on three. Or Bowes does. Falcons have not scored. Actually, they've got the one basket in. Jayhawks have not scored at all here in this second half. Waller. At their free throw line, she'll get that one in. Take her up to 12. Sinking as well. Leading score for the Falcons tonight. Continue to build that margin or tighten up that margin, but build that score in 14 points for Waller. One point game, advantage Jessup yet to score here second half. Kick off right side. Jessup maintaining that zone press. Three in the corner, the attempt sinks in for Williamson. She's in the book for the first basket she's got tonight. Pilcher. Struggling on that shot inside. Still in single digits. Again, she had 30 the other night against Sumner Fredericksburg and has been averaging 27 points per game as AP hits another one. And they want a timeout on the floor on the Jessup side of things with 5-12 remaining here in this third period. Looking ahead on the schedule for the Jayhawks. Landbrook Rhinebeck game here at home on Tuesday. I guess a nickel game, but non conference. Union next Friday at home. Got a Monday night game against Don Bosco on the 19th. And nothing until after the first of the year when they'll. Have Grundy Center and Olwine that first week back to school. AP talked about their schedule beforehand. They're on a they're right in the middle of a five-game road trip. Coming from Grundy Center and Columbus on wins. Here Jessup next week, Union Hudson. Finally get a home game after their opener and hosting the Jamboree, but uh, they bring South Harden in on December the 20th. Cohagen in the game now for Jessup. Bain also in there making an appearance. It's one thing about Coach Conrad and his coaching philosophy, he's going to go through that bench. Give players rest where they need or a reset. Got some skill levels. Got a lot of young, young players on this team. Heavy sophomores. Peyton Bowes, Peyton Youngblood, Sage Bain, Carly Schutte, Olivia Nesbitt, Amaya Trayvon Boyd, Sienna Youngblood, Ireland Truix, all sophomores. And 
just, uh, I guess, the three seniors on this squad. And Sailor Youngblood, Mackenzie Butters, and Laney Pilcher. Blocking foul, Schultz will get dinged with that. That is the second team foul of the second half for AP. Pilcher double team. Sage Bain has it. Now Nesbitt bounce into Cohagen, push in a little bit. Can't get that one to fall. 23 seconds that remained on that shot clock. Reset that. Go to the end of the floor. Third period is where we're at. Again, the Falcons. The Falcons have 11 to 0 run on Jessup right now. Jessup has yet to put a basket in. Since last half. Sage, Peyton Youngblood, Bolden, Sailor Youngblood, Pilcher all in there. Young lineup. There's a shot right side. No good off the iron from Schultz and a three rebound to Pilcher. Drives that. Line on the sideline goes right towards it, and we're going to see a blocking foul. And Pilcher goes to the free throw line. Looking to build on that basket she had, getting the and one. She was at eight points forever. But Jessup was at 30 forever here in this second half. Once you're up and going. Thirty-three, thirty-four. Jessup, not too far off. But again, the story of this second half has been AP playing the catch-up where they needed to. An 11-0 run. It's an 11-3 run now. He'll have the chance to inbound. Peyton Bowes and Emma Bowes all in the game right now. That ball goes in. Looking to get across midcourt. Ball's loose. Try to get to Peyton. Got it down from Peyton Kluster. Pressure from AP. Peyton Bowles has to drive that forward, finds that elbow out there. And Coach Conrad would like a timeout before we get too far down the line. And Jessup struggling on the scoring end in the second half. And Lady Pilcher. On the bench right now, giving her a breather. She does lead in scoring for the Jayhawks with 10. Actually, I think with 11. But Waller, their leading scorer. For the Falcons, you're looking 18 point average. She's sitting with 14 right now with Waller. At that point guard spot, finds Bolden. AP tough on defense. Alan Waller. Nice takeaway in the hands of Emma Bowes. Now Peyton Bowes. Gets that one out and loose. Pilcher back in. Bolden will sit down. Sage Bain 
I think a seat as well with Nesbitt now in the game for Jessup. 2.23 to go. Third period. Payne Bowes in the corner. Rim no good. Nesbitt pulls it up off the box and goes. Look in Nesbitt. Give her six points tonight. Cross court. Isabella Boosman. She's going to get tangled up and timeout is wanted. 30 second timeout wanted by AP. And their head coach is Brady Driscoll, assisted by Sean Cruzy, Ellie Thomas. <laughs> Looking ahead on AP's schedule other than the usual suspects. In January, they've got a game at home with Van Meter coming down from the Des Moines area to compete with AP. So change that schedule up a little bit. Beckman Catholic on that schedule for the 7th of January as Jessup will host the Blazers here in this gym. It'll be a 5 o'clock, looks like a Saturday game on the 7th. That'll be after a road game up at Ola. Under two minutes, third period. High pass is coming from Parkersburg. AP happening with Parkersburg. Coming baseline, triple team. And the defense prevents a shot, and the clock goes off. Full press. Pilcher finds Bowes midcourt. That's going to get blocked. Again, continues to lead this team at the point and on the scoreboard. Getting the rebounds and struggling. Peyton Cruiser can't get that, and the whistle's blown. Foul is going to count against Peyton Bowes. That'll be Peyton's first. Personal 15 foul for Jessup and a two shot free throw attempt. Now for Addison Williamson, senior guard. One of three seniors, including Ellen Waller, as well as Kennedy Lynn on the AP Falcon squad for girls, varsity. Shut up and good. Williamson. Lose that turnover and Jessup doesn't allow another basket. It looked like looked like Pilcher got a hack, but Fish will say no. Just kind of came out of bounds. You can kind of see that uh, just soft, disgusted look that Laney has. Bose outside shot, can't make that fall for Emma Bose. <laughs> Officials, a little bit of a conversation. It's Coach Jordan Conrad continues to uh, give some direction. On the inbound. Forty nine seconds up top. The bows down to Pilcher now with the attempt on a three. Take her to fourteen points. They had that seven-point margin at the break. 
AP went on a 11 to 3 run. And Jessup's been trying to get back up top for a while. AP will get that ball back in their hands. Alan Waller with it. Bring it left side. Williamson. Downloaded win and the whistle blows. And advantage AP is uh, Jessup. Gets another ding on their team foul board at six. Third personal foul against Sage Bain in her time of the game. Jordan Conrad has gone nine deep tonight. Pete Young won in the game. Sage will have a seat. Free throw. And around doesn't fall for Kendall Ryer. Lanny calling out the offense. And the Bows comes up left side. And a little mishandle from Laney. Will come out of bounds. Knocked off of her hands by AP. One point four seconds to go, third period. AP with some substitutions. Has been finding her place in the floor in that corner. Falcons again continuing to make some changes in this last 1.4. Laney quick into Bowes and not going to have enough time. As defensive pressure was there. 40 to 38. Now advantage is for AP. As AP scored 17 in that third period compared to the Jayhawks in their eight points. Athletic schedule coming up tomorrow. High school wrestling, JV tournament down in the Port City with Union Varsity Wrestling traveling up to Owain for the tournament there. So there's adult volleyball coming up on Sunday, so we can uh, pretty much count Ardell Oshner got to be at volleyball on Sunday. So should make for. Uh, Make for an easier time in the adult league, I would think. And Monday night, high school winter concert happening here in the South Gym. And some youth basketball as well. Bolden on her own, see some challenge. Last quarter. Swish that one in. And a liar. That's going to be 10 points total for her tonight. Bows. They're on a bowler. Struggling to find that inside. On oh, the rim, no good. AP in the shot, getting opportunities. Now Sadie Youngblood will find that rebound. She's going to have to slow down and Pilcher. Gets mugged by Waller, so that will be, I think, her only second personal foul, 15 foul for Appington Parkersburg. Seven minute mark to go. Bows met with a double team high up to Sailor Youngblood. Bolden, baseline, going to lose that. Peyton looking 
for the charge, but uh, Peyton Bowes gets probably her second personal foul. Seventh team foul. And then we'll have Schultz at the free throw line. And she does get that shot counted and take her to five. Now Peyton Bowes on her own left side. Having some ball control challenges right now. Floor brings it back for AP. They'll shoot a one and one as they are in that bonus. Back the rim, no good. AP gets their own rebound, but Pilcher get on that shot, getting obstructed. Pilcher, the most experienced player on that floor right now. Leading scorer. And Cohagen. Try to push in a little bit. She's going to get called with a charge. Applying some pressure. Eight point margin. And Jessup at half. At that seven point lead. AP is able to bring it within two. At the end of the third. And Jessup has struggled in this second half. He only put up eight points total in this second half. The extra step from Laney. I'm out wanted. Coach Jordan Conrad would like a full timeout as he gets this team aligned. Talk next Tuesday, JV Varsity, fresh soft games, hosting Glenbrook Rhinebeck. Thursday night next week. Planning your schedule accordingly. High school wrestling meet. Right here in the gym, it'll be senior night. Junior high girls. Basketball will be at, uh, I guess, home with, with Grundy Center. Junior high boys wrestling on the road at O-line. But uh, I get to be up here every night next week, Anthony. Don't forget to buy your Very excited about it. School board Monday night. Game Tuesday night. CTE meeting Wednesday night. Wrestling Thursday night. Basketball Friday. There you go. And the bleachers, please. I say get to be here, I have to be here. Half, well, one of them I have to. Ball gets loose, AP. Gonna get that back, Laney had a touch on it. 5.32 to go in the game. Quick on the inbound, shot goes. Ryher. Run up to 12 points. Jessa responding. Nesbitt. Who's fighting for that ball on the floor? That'll be the third personal. Against Schultz, it'll be six overall team foul. Jessup not on the bonus, but uh, Falcons in that double bonus situation. 
Looking for an opportunity. Shot clock at 28. Baseline, Sage Bain over to Peyton Youngblood. What you need, need you a three. Everyone five. Jessup, playing some good defense. AP, find a way to get shots off. Just by Youngblood, double team from Nesbitt. And and Bain, shot is missed, rebound to Ryherd, and here comes Lady Pulcher. No look over to Peyton. Rim no good. And she touched the line, is what they're going to say. Williamson on the save, or attempt on the save. Is out of bounds. That one stripped away. Jim quieted down, wondering what the circumstance was, and yeah, guard play over and back. Bose in the guard play up, Sage in that lane, back to Bose, takes the three, no good. Nice hold up defense right on that baseline, Nesbitt holding pressure. will get her fourth personal foul. A little pressure there on the inbound. Or not the inbound, but the rebound. at 16 points. All loose down low, trying to get to Nesbitt, taken away by Ryer. Nesbitt on the rebound. There's Bowes. Give a go. Block shot from Ryder. Actually, Lind, I'm sorry. Three minute mark. I heard had the opportunity. Uh, here's Peyton Youngblood. Back out to Nesbitt. She's going to take it on her own. Draws the foul, gets the shot. Take her to 10 points. And you're on a bowl, and will have a seat. Bain, Youngblood, Peyton Bowes, Lenny Pilcher. Look at Nesbitt, all in. Can't get the and one for Nesbitt. A four point margin. Not done yet. Down for Jessup. And you got a young team here. You've got four sophomores on the floor right now. That ball's still alive. Young what pulls it down, comes off of AP. It will be Jessup's ball.
across midcourt. Dish off, Bose has it. Nesbitt. Bain takes a shot on a bounce. Oh, nice turnover back to Jessup. Pilcher looking for an opportunity. She finds Sage. Sage Bain, four points for her. Two point margin. Looking for a turnover. Shot is deep, doesn't fall. Now Sage Bain with it. Ball going to get loose, and wow, we're going to say it came off of Jessup. Timeout on the floor. Yeah, timeout wanted on the floor. 49 47, Appleton Parkersburg with the advantage right now, leading score. On the floor, 16 points. For applicant Parkersburg is Kendall Ryer. 14 for the team's leading scorer on the average of the score, Allen and the Waller. Lee Pilcher, 14. 10 points at the hands of Olivia Nesbitt as well. Six foot forward as a sophomore. Coming up, high school boys basketball. This will be a barn burner. Happening at Parkersburg coming in from the North Iowa Cedar Central Division. 3-0 on the year, 1-0 in conference play. Jessup also 3-0, winning their first conference game. AP with victories, heavy victories against Oline. Two-point margin over Grundy Center. Big win over Columbus. Jensen, big margin on Columbus. Getting by Denver. Took it to it to Sumner the other night by 30. Sumner Fred. 60 seconds. So Jensen's going to finish this off. Going to hang on to that seven second shot clock. Ball is loose. Waiting for that clock to sound and finally goes. Crazy thing. Lady Pilcher was just. She got that. Batted her off of AP out of bounds or to go out of bounds, but they picked it up. Did not have enough time for the shot. Jessa. Play some safe basketball, not turn that over, not rush the shot, rush the pass. Pilcher couldn't get a handle on it. Peyton Bowes to lean off to Nesbitt. Youngbutt's open right side. Sage down low trying to get a handle on it. Is she going to post up? 10 seconds on that shot clock. Peyton Bowes back no good. And they're going to swarm, trying to get a possession arrow for Jessup. And we will see a foul. for a crucial miss tonight in this next basket as the timeout is wanted. Timeout is wanted by AP and their head coach, Brady Driscoll. Gonna take a 30 second timeout. Get his free throw shooter a little more ready. As waiting in the wings down here in the north, he's part of the south gym. AP and Jessup Varsity squads waiting to hit the floor. Hang on for this one. 13.3 seconds to go. Free throw attempt by Schultz. The 
Better solidify a lead. Misses it. Rebound, Pilcher. Pressure coming defensively. Still remains for Jessup. But they're going to continue to see pressure. Point nine. Nesbitt finds down to pose. We got a Bolden. Ball does come out of bounds off the AP with 1.3 seconds to go. And Coach wants a timeout. He's got one left. Pressure situation. Trying to make that ball progress down floor. Watching tonight. We're going to close out the girls' link here on YouTube and Facebook Live. And there will be a new one that launches for the boys' game that will follow. This is the Jayhawk Sports Network from Heartland Technology. I'm Nate Claver, Luke Baldwin. Has the night off. Well, he's actually taking the whole week off. Joke's on him. I'm taking the first week of the year off, so it's going to be on him. Tough game. Jessup going down to lose tonight, 49-47, as they tried. Last, last ditch effort. Let me score for Jessup, 14 points. Lady Pilcher, 10. For Olivia, Olivia Nesbitt, other side of things, you got 14, actually 16 points for Ryard. And Lawler comes in at 14 points as well. Jayhawks will move into next week, and we will have two games on the Jayhawks Sports Network coming for you next week as we have Tuesday night with Glenbrook Rhinebeck and Friday home with Union and those games coming for you on the Jayhawk Sports Network. I invite you to follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and again join us again coming up here very shortly on a reset on YouTube and Facebook Live for Jessup Boys against AP here Coming up very shortly. Front site producer Anthony Bond, camera operator Eric Clark. I'm Nate Claybird. Final score, girls lose tonight 49 to 47. We'll hear from head coach Jordan Conrad at halftime of the boys game. You can watch the entire game again on replay and others on our Facebook page as well as YouTube. This is the Jayhawks Sports Network, Marlin Technology, music courtesy of bensound.com. Go Jayhawks and good evening.